We're here with the 2024 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross plug-in hybrid Aspire grade level and we're over here in WA testing this car out so I just wanted to show you a quick walk around the car, the features that I like, the things I'm not quite liking at the moment uh, and overall just whether I think it's a car that you should consider if you're looking for a small SUV with the option of pure electric mode as well. Starting at the front, you're going to have a 360 degree camera system. So you have a camera that sticks out at the front, two on the wing mirrors and one on the back, stitching an image of a 360 degree bird's eye view, making it super easy when it comes to parking in, park, in car parks or just navigating tight uh, areas that you need to maneuver. Stylish front design, daytime running lights and your headlights as well as all looking nice and schmick. And this red is actually a really nice color as well. So if I was to buy one, it's probably gonna be this or the white. Coming around to the side, you're gonna have some alloy wheels, a nice big plug-in hybrid electric vehicle badge. So what the FEV actually means is that this car comes with two fuel flaps. So you have a nice big one on this side that opens up, plus another one on the other side. This one does all your charging, the other one does all your fuel. So what it allows you to do is run the car on petrol uh, for however long you want to drive. The car will uh, the car will balance that out as needed, like a normal hybrid, so that the hybrid electric drivetrain drives the wheels as required to help save you fuel, give you instant torque and instant acceleration. But what it will also do is it will allow you to drive on a pure EV mode, providing you have sufficient charge. Now that pure EV mode will give you approximately 40 to 50 kilometers of driving. So if your daily commute is less than that, it's a really ideal car to either save money on the way to work or on the way to and from work if you're lucky enough to charge at work or if you commute less than that in total. Now the average Australian drives a total of 37 kilometers each and every day according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. So when it comes to that, you're probably going to be well and truly covered at being able to drive fully electric Monday to Friday. And on the weekends, if you want to go down south, you want to go explore somewhere and you've got a long road trip, this car is perfectly suited to do that for you uh, by having the combination of the electric motor and the petrol motor to extend the range a little bit longer should you want that longer drive. Now, this one's been fitted with the Mitsubishi roof racks, which I want to make a quick point about that. So some of the cars come with accessories, some of them don't when we have reviews. The interesting thing is you don't really hear any additional wind noise or any um, kind of noise that comes from these roof racks. So if you did want to have some roof racks on there and actually get out an adventure, um, I'd probably stick to the genuine Mitsubishi ones because normally when you put roof racks on the top of the car, you get that layer of air that gets thrown between the roof rack and the roof of the car making a buffeting noise and just a really uncomfortable and annoying drive. Secondly, nice big wide opening rear doors. So if, you've, if you're a parent and you're chucking kids in, it's going to be really, really easy to get in and out of that back seat, to load your child, to load whatever you need to, get in and out with friends, maybe some older people that have limited mobility. Uh, you're definitely going to be able to get them in and out really easily. So we'll show you more inside in a second. Uh, as mentioned, your charging port is here and it's just your standard charging array. So you've got your dual plugs depending on what you're going to be charging. Now this one here is a type 2 plug, this one here is your ch uh, Chadmo style plug. So with the plug on the left hand side, that's the one that you're going to go and plug in at free charging uh, locations or when you get home and you're plugging into your household power. Uh, that one there uh, will give you um, a slightly slower charge, but it will top you up pretty quickly. So uh, if you're in WA, as an example, Lakeside Shopping Center has free charging uh, for the 22 kilowatt speed chargers. So you just rock up, you plug into that one and off you go when you come back. So you've topped up while you're shopping. So a pretty good compromise. Now, Boot is manual opening and that's okay. Rear pa parking sensors. Uh, you have a charging equipment area where you can store everything underneath. The car doesn't have a spare tire like a normal car would because of the hybrid system. 
So you do have a um, tire inflation kit and charger that comes in the back here. Uh, sorry, inflator that comes in the back here. Uh, as well as a little bit of room there to put all your charging equipment, your cables, everything like that as well. Now, if you're charging at home, Mitsubishi has given you one big box here that has all your equipment as well that you can either leave in the car or just leave at home. So whatever you want to do is there. There is a 220 volt charger outlet with an Australian PowerPoint plug on the right hand side of the boot. So as you're driving around, if you do want to take a portable fridge, maybe charge your phone, your drones, anything like that, you're going to be able to do that nice and easily. The boot opens up nice and tall, but still has a lower grab handle if you're a little bit shorter. So that's nice and good. And it has a rear cargo blind that allows you to pull this over and conceal whatever you have in here, but also making your air conditioning work a little bit less uh, on hotter days by covering up the area that you want to prioritize for your cooling first. So potentially saving you some money on fuel. These back seats, they do fold flat and they do fold down. So they're a multi-position seat. So once you've moved that, they do fold down, giving you plenty of storage and space for any oversized items. Or if you wanna go camping and you wanna put in a mattress and you just wanna sleep in the back, you can definitely do that with this car as a good compromise for a fun city car during the week and a good car on weekends as well. That rear cargo blind is removable as well. You just It's pressure pointed on both sides, so you just push it one way and it slides out nice and easily. Uh, design on the back as well, it's pretty stylish. Look, at the end of the day, it's just a standard SUV, but the Eclipse Cross has always looked pretty aggressive. Uh, and sporty rather than a little bit bland and round like a lot of other brands. So they've done a good job with that there. Now, let's talk interior. So there's a couple of things that I, I like, a couple of things that I think need a little bit of improvement. So materials on the doors, soft touch, soft touch at the top. They feel really nice. But then you have this silver highlight here. Um, now these on Mitsubishi's always tend to get scratched up really easily because it's a painted material um, and it just doesn't look nice over time because it doesn't wear well uh, with, with high use. The chrome up here does look nice and does generally tend to fare okay and you've got this kind of almost carbon fiber look um, insert down here. So you've got like three or four different looks going on including the gloss black probably just streamlining it a little bit this probably would have been a little bit nicer either as gloss black or matte black or even an extension of that carbon print um, because I'll show you in a second an area in here where you already have a little bit of chipping and, and scratching with it um, which is a shame because the car overall looks nice inside um, the dash soft touch materials at the top a generous glove box down here as well um, and just a really nice open layout. So it is easy to look around the cabin um, as a passenger or a driver as well. So you're pretty good to go there. Let me show you in the back. So moving into the back seat, you're gonna have plenty of space. And because you can actually adjust the angle that the backrest sits, you can actually push yourself back a little bit to be a little bit more accommodating. You just need to put the headrest up. So that would be on a road trip. It'd actually be a, not a bad place to be. You've got an armrest that comes down just here as well, making it nice and relaxed. A couple of cup holders, some USB-C chargers and a USB-A charger down the bottom. And no pocket holder on the back here for the, the passenger, uh, but the left-hand side does have one. So if you wanna store any kind of tablets or anything, you can on that side, just not on this side. Uh, interesting amount of space underneath the driver's seat um, with your feet, so if you do need to push your feet underneath because you are a little bit taller, you're gonna be okay. Headroom is what you would expect from a small SUV. It's enough, but if you're six foot three plus, you're probably gonna be struggling a little bit in the back here. Um, overall though, it's actually quite a comfortable place to be in the back seat. Um, and I could see you being quite comfortable on a, wrong, on a long road trip. If you're a parent, however, you have Isofix points on both sides here you would want to make sure that you're going to have plenty of space behind the passenger and the driver's seats with the seats the whole way back um, and where you're going to actually sit from a seating position as well 
just to make sure that your baby seat isn't gonna to be too big for the space that's in the back here. So just one to keep in mind. But overall, really nice place to be and I would highly recommend it if you've got small kids, maybe some friends, and you're not using it as a big family car. Uh, it definitely is a car that will grow with you. Now let's move across to the driver's side and see what you get over there. Now, finally, the driver's seat position. It's actually a really comfortable car. I've done about 700 kilometers in this car so far uh, and very, very impressed at the comfort level, but also just the ability for the car to just feel like an extension of you rather than you feeling a little bit off-centered or a little bit off. Uh, that being said, the one thing I don't like is here. So you have your mirror controls here and the armrest and handle and the power window buttons are all here as well as the central locking. But what happens when you've got the door closed is this handle actually gets in the way. You can't really go through the, the inside part of the handle. So you end up kind of just by default thinking you can slide to grab them just there, but you've got to go around it. So just a, it's a weird design. That's all I'm gonna say. It's, it's not life changing. You're not touching your windows all that much anyway uh, throughout your normal drive but it's just an odd one and you'd probably get used to it if you owned one. Uh, if you do own one and you're watching this video, let me know in the comment section uh, what you think and if it does annoy you as well. Bottle holders in the doors, nice and big pockets, and you also have a little bit of additional space for things like wallets, phones, or anything else you want. Uh, this car does come with stability control and radar cruise control, so that's all standard and is really easy to use uh, once again there. Steering wheel, as I said, is a nice size and is well positioned and it is tilt and reach adjustable as well. So you can find that perfect position to make the seat and the steering wheel work for you to make it comfortable on longer drives. Indicators on the right with auto uh, on and off headlights and, and wipers on the left hand side with auto rain sensing wipers also. Now, the most important one is your infotainment and your audio. Now, it's a Mitsubishi power sound system. The audio quality, it's okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. The highest spec levels of all of the Mitsubishis come with a more premium sound system and generally sound a little bit crisper. However, this does still sound pretty good. The screen, not so much. So it's a little bit laggy, but it does the job well um, and Let's be honest, like you're not gonna be moving that screen on a regular basis while you're driving. You're probably gonna move it once or twice um, throughout a whole drive if you're lucky at that. So it's probably not gonna be an issue, but just wanted to point that out. Air conditioning vents are placed in the right spots here just to keep you nice and cool and just to get the air flowing to exactly where you need it. The camera system, would like to see a brighter camera system, but it does the job. Um, you do have directional dynamic lines that come through here that will show you where your uh, lines are going to, sorry, where your car is going to end up based on your steering wheel input when you are reversing or navigating through tighter spots. Down the bottom here, you do have two USB-A chargers. Um, so you've got that ready to go down here. And outside of that, you have heated seats for the front and all of your controls for the actual hybrid system down here, electric park brake, the auto on, um, the auto hold button. So when you come to a stop at the set of lights, it will hold the car in its position without you needing to keep your hands on the brakes. And the cup holders, they've got little grab teeth, but also they're quite deep. So they do a very, very good job all round. Um, outside of that, it's a decent car for the price that you pay and it's decent for what it's trying to do, which is a plug-in hybrid at a more balanced cost and a smaller car, which is probably the best of both worlds. So we would definitely recommend the car. You're going to have about 600 Ks worth of range without the electric battery. Uh, sorry, you're going to have about 600 Ks with the electric battery topping you up. Um, and overall, just a nice place to be. So let me know what you think in the comments about the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. And until next time, we'll bring you another and another review. Stay tuned.